Fond greetings to each one who joins us this day in online worship for a special service. On this last Sunday of the Christian year, we rejoice in honouring the faithful shepherd as Christ the King. Paul helpfully reminds us that the Father's honour is our ultimate goal and reward. God is all in all through his communication of divine love. As usual, Sylvia will unravel the mystery about being welcomed into the kingdom. However, some of you are wanting to know if the loaves placed on the altar last week made a difference for someone. Yes, love from the basket always makes a difference. A homeless mother and her young child welcomed the purpose of love's gift, food and security. If your heart is feeling like ours, then it's timely to share peace with each other as we say, the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. We sing hymn 133, O worship the King, all glorious above, O gratefully sing his power and his love. Join in a prayer of adoration, thanksgiving, and confession. Holy God, Christ the King, we gladly pause to ponder the message of your being and love. Ever since the dawning of creation, you have been nurturing all people and tending to the needs of created and creatures. We are never alone. Your tender eyes and patient love watches over us. We greet you, welcoming God, 
with our many moods and concerns. Draw us into your presence where your spirit heals our spirits. In your presence, we realize our lives have value, worth and significance. When your light shines for us, the dark thoughts and shadows which like to surround and depress us are scattered and pathways of hope, peace and justice beckon us to live with dignity and love. Forgive us for the way in which we rationalise our frailties and discount the times we slink away from what you would have us be and do. Others may still be waiting, longing for a glance of kindness, a word of tenderness, or the offer of company during tough times. Enable your tender mercy to massage the stiff and unbending attitudes that limit us from seeing others as you see them, leaving them to feel they are not worthy. Today, as always, your transforming grace and generous heart watches over us with the safety of your redeeming love. Forgiveness is your wonder and gift. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. The reading this morning is taken from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food? Or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you? Or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. In this is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Christ the King, or the Reign of Christ Sunday. The theme is the hiddenness of the kingdom. The hiddenness of the kingdom. On this last Sunday of the Christian calendar, we are invited to hear the story that is literally taken as the judgment of the nations, referring to non-Jewish people of Jesus' time, known as Gentiles. We're invited to hear the story as Jesus' parable, revealing the hiddenness of the kingdom, its secret dimension, its sudden arrival, its tangible qualities. In a time when people were living with twists and turns in captivity and slavery under kings and rulers, there was prophetic hope of two things. A promised kingdom for restoration from suffering and a promised savior figure with a divine mission, the Messiah. Again and again, Jesus through his parables, his teachings and his life, reminds us, his listeners, that the kingdom belongs to those regarded as little ones in the world of his time, the poor, the widows, the small children, the sick, the lame, and the blind. Part of the secret dimension of the kingdom is that it's already here, and we are already part of it, where we embrace all of creation with all people, including those who are called and labeled by society as little ones. This is the kingdom where Jesus reigns. Reigns as the word with a capital W, through whom the whole cosmos was created. Reigns within us through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Reigns in society where justice is done to all people of faith, all backgrounds, and Jesus reigns also in the future hope. The reign of Christ the King is engraved in our nature, respected in our faith, and lived out in our daily life. That's the intangible qualities of the kingdom. The hiddenness of the kingdom is its revelation. This reminds me of growing up in Tonga, already declared a Christian kingdom since the arrival of missionaries in 1826. Tongan history tells of a well-known event known as the Tukufonua Kilangi, the dedication of Tonga and its people to God by the King George Tubo I in 1839. This event was symbolized by the King taking a handful of soil lifting his hands and eyes towards the heavens and throwing the soil, saying, Koe otua motonga, kohokutofia. Translated, God and Tonga are my inheritance. That, to me, is like the dedication of Tonga to the reign of Christ, including the king of Tonga himself. George Tubo I's words of dedication became Tonga's coat of arms in 1875 and remained so to this day. 
It maybe is hidden, yet very much alive and revealed in culture, in well-being, and in all things Tongan, from the environment, to the family, to the community, to the church, to the country, and the kingdom. And there are four core values known as the Kave Gola, golden strands, that Tongan culture is built upon and expected to be upheld on a daily basis. They are known as first, ofa, love. Second, faka apa apa, respect. Third, lototo, humility. And fourth, tauhiva, responsibility in relationships. These core values for me hit home harder, louder and clearer as the intangibles of the kingdom may be hidden as it's not talked about or written as in a litany, yet very much alive in its living out as a way of being. Today's parable heralds the kingdom and the reign of Christ for all people today. In the parable, Jesus quotes from Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 7, that if a man is upright, he oppresses no one, he returns the pledge on debt, does not rob, gives his own food to the hungry, his clothes to those who lack clothing. And these are all about the kingdom engraved in our nature and way of being, the very way we are created. And those who recognize the kingdom as something that grants grace sufficient to live life find the answers. Those who do not perpetuate the problem of making judgments. Jesus draws the listeners us to focus on the ultimate ground of our identity that has nothing to do with success or failure and is not built on our performances but is founded and grounded in the belief that God loves and accepts us. So the parable wasn't about the separation of sheep and goats, the good and the bad. Sheep and goats are born that way, and they are okay. What matters is the realization and belief that God loves not for what we do, but for who we are, warts and all. This realization prevents any self-destructive judgment or judgment of others. This parable teaches us what it might mean to know and to love ourselves enough in such a way that we can truly reach out with love and care towards others. When we encounter our true selves, so do we learn what it means to love and serve others with the fullness of life. Amen. We dedicate our offering for the mission and ministry of the church. Let us pray. Embracing God with grateful hearts, we give thanks for your provision and all that we are blessed with. May our living and our giving be channels of your love, grace, and hope in our communities as our way of continuing participation in the revelation of your kingdom. Amen. 
we pray for others and ourselves. Lord God, we come seeking to make good choices in life, wanting to reach out to all that is excellent and admirable, hoping to be worthy by what others see in and hear from us. Our compassion enfolds those for whom this week has brought unexpected change ill health, and the need to face new challenges. We can so easily become ensnared with negative attitudes, feeling hurt and constricted by events outside our control, becoming victims of our own and others' decisions and behaviour. Domestic violence, financial stress, demeaning employment, lack of life opportunities that provide challenge and engagement, saddens many and causes a sense of life is not fair. Help us to be people who encourage hope, offer friendship, showing belief in the worth of every neighbour. Just as we have become excited about double donuts in Victoria, COVID-19 reasserts its insidious presence and health-damaging impacts in South Australia. Strengthen our resolve to wear masks, socially isolate, and aim to protect our sisters and brothers from risk and ill health. Christ our King reaches out to us just as really and gently as Jesus did to his disciples and followers. His love renews our inner strength, touches our imagination, lifts us to new meanings in life. May our hearts keep praising God Our lives respond in love and service as hope and joy beckon us onwards as we join in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We join in singing, Brother, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Hymn 650.
the benediction. May God's beauty be reflected in your eyes. May God's love be reflected in your hands. May God's wisdom be reflected in your words. And may the knowledge of the kingdom and reign of Christ flow from your heart. Amen.